Mike Lashley here. Um, sorry I couldn't be there in person. Um, you're in Siena, which sounds fantastic. And I'm here in California, which is also not bad, preparing for the SAA meetings, which are in just a couple of weeks. But I do want to thank both Alan and Ian for having me, at least virtually, even though it didn't work out as we had hoped, and even Skype seems to have been a bit of a fall down. Uh, but let me at least put in my lightning talk and talk a bit about some ideas here and, and in a differential time zone and space, we could still have some level of discussion. So um, Center for Digital Archaeology is an organization that I started a couple of years ago with some really awesome people. And we've been doing this digital archaeology thing for a bit now. Uh, we're developing some apps called Codify and Mookadoo that help to make sure that content is sustainable over a long time. And today I just want to talk a bit about the downstream uses of archaeological databases as a means of archive future thinking discussion. So by uh, means of introduction, let me share a couple of projects we've been working on to give you a sense of the breadth and I believe the challenges that we have and that are actually facing the communities and projects that could benefit from the archaeological data that we produce in our databases. So since we're thinking about the future of databases, I thought it might be nice to highlight how our data is being used downstream. Let's begin with the Karuk tribe, which is a federally recognized tribal nation that wants to build a digital library for educating um, their community. And it's a challenging undertaking for many reasons. 80% of the community is below the California, California's median income level. They basically have no internet or phone service and the youth tend to leave and um, they're soft funded. So these are the real kind of real world challenges that we need to think about when we're building archeological data because the crew um, love to work with people and people love to work with them. So working over the last five years on a food securities NSF research grant with UC Berkeley, the crew has developed a research policy because it, it, that basically impacts everybody that wants to work with them, uh, which is a lot of different organizations and groups, including people like us. So the research policy has some major concepts, which are pretty interesting and, and exciting. Um, and to do a project, you need to create a proposal that is taken to tribal council. The proposal has to include a data management plan, which is typically written in collaboration with Karuk because project collaborators interpret data, disseminate information, and make decisions about their data that impact Karuk people and the ancestral territory. And often that is how um, the Karuk will be portrayed in the public domain, which is something that we really need to think about in terms of putting our content out there in, in open data ways when it can in fact impact culture. But another really interesting thing is how the content might be used. I don't think we all, we maybe even think that when, when the crew are considering how, they really mean like how the archeological data might help them um, in their food ways and regalia and basketry. Next, I'm gonna move up to British Columbia and talk briefly about another First Nation, the uh, Musqueam Band. And we're working with them to build an online digital heritage platform co for collating the reports, dissertations, and other accounts to facilitate land and cultural management. So the Musqueam are really big on community engagement, as you can see here at the top, and reciprocal knowledge exchange. So in this case, what happens is all of our archeological data or reports become a single data point in their research library or a collection, which is a collection of physical volumes that are curated digitally and digitized and born digital reports that are all managed using something very interesting, which are these traditional knowledge labels and licenses that help band members, researchers, and the public more deeply understand the meaningfulness that are embodied within these DH items, including archeological data sets. Now family, for example, is a core tenant of Musqueam society. And so the hopes are that the licenses and labels will work also within the band to encourage sharing family to family, which I believe is a goal we could all get around. Last and briefly, I'm going to talk just ever so briefly about the Jezreel Valley Regional Project, just to bring it back full circle to archaeological endeavors. So it's a massive undertaking in Israel, over 500 sites, and this is the survey area for just this coming summer. Now, just about everything, every kind of tech is being used in JVRP, but, the, but really the, there is a method to the madness, and that's where databases can come in with a goal to develop a total history approach where everything known about the region, the survey area, a site, is available to the archaeologist in the field. So it's a big goal, but we're making some great progress. So I stop here to remind us that we work in context, and our data streams flow in and out of disciplines, to be sure, 
but through a well thought out workflow that thinks through reciprocity digitally, we will have a richer record to draw from and contribute to. So I look forward to carrying on this conversation with you in various virtual ways and Twitter and everything else. And thank you for your attention.